Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, and also good evening to anyone who is watching live on the Council's YouTube channel. Tonight, this is the meeting of the Corporate Services, Commerce and Communities Policy Overview Committee. My name is Councillor Richard Mills, and I am chairman of this meeting. Uh, details of the business are shown on the agenda that you'll be able to see online as well. Um, a reminder to councillors and officers, as this is the first time that we, we are using this for this committee, please, when you are speaking, turn your microphone on using the button. Um, otherwise, your comments will not be picked up by those watching online. And then when you're finished speaking, please also remember to turn it off. Um, firstly, going around the table, I will introduce all the members of the committee. So starting on my left, we have Councillor Dillon, Councillor Blitz and Councillor Farley. And then on my right, Councillor Bridges, Councillor Deville, Councillor Tubidar, Councillor Brightman and Councillor Graham. Tonight, we are joined by two council officers, Nigel Cram and James Roger, along with Luke Taylor from Democratic Services. A few matters of housekeeping um, before we get started. Fire alarm, we are not expecting a fire drill, so if it does go off, please follow officers. And mobile devices, please ensure these are switched off during the meeting. Um, I know we've got a couple of changes on the committee from the previous year. Just to let you know, well, firstly, welcome, and Councillor Graham, I know you're substituting. Um, if you wish to speak, please indicate. And the way I try to operate is you have a first initial question and then allow you a, a follow-up. Um, and then, obviously, we'll come back to you in time, but we try to let everyone have a go, first of all, before sort of a continuous back and forth between one member. So moving to the agenda. Um, agenda item one, apologies for absence. We've had apologies from Councillor Goddard and Councillor Graham is substituting. Thank you. Uh, agenda item two, declarations of interest. None. Um, agenda item three, minutes of the previous meeting. So we have two sets of minutes here, the first of which is from the committee meeting on the 9th of April, and the second is from the Council AGM, which was appointing the committee chair and vice chair, held on the 9th of May 2019. Can I take those as agreed? They are agreed. Agenda item four, exclusion of press and public. All items before us are part one, so are held in public, which takes us to agenda item five, our main item for this evening, which is our scoping report for our major review of this municipal year. Um, we are pleased to be joined by, said, by Nigel and James tonight. Um, and we have, as was agreed at the previous meeting of the POC in April, we are looking to carry out a review into a title of local commerce employment, skills and job creation. So I'm going to invite Nigel to introduce the, the report that, the, that he's kindly put together for the committee. Uh, hopefully you'll find this fairly straightforward. We didn't go into too much detail this evening. We set out what we hoped was some useful background. I'll say the big picture as we've called it. So we try to give you a very brief overview of where the economy in Hillingdon is. Obviously, as the uh, committee moves through its review, we can go into more detail. But we've given you some initial, you know, the snapshot, what it looks like, how many businesses we've got, how we think it's faring, JSA levels. And then we started to come on to the change in economic profile. There's some very good news going on in Hillingdon. We've got things like the Central Research Laboratory, which is driving hardware development. So if you think of software and Hoxton, what it did for that part of London, we're hoping the Central Research Laboratory will drive the similar sort of hardware development down in, in, in Hayes, and they're looking to expand. We've also got our colleagues at Uxbridge College who've been very successful in the delivering the first Institute of Technology Centre for the borough which I think is big news. There are two in, the, two in London, one in Uxbridge, one in East London. The next one, to show you how important these are, the next one's down in Swindon. So they are only about 12 in the entire country. So the college has done brilliantly to get that. And again, I think that is something that the committee would probably like to explore a bit further in terms of good news for the, for the borough. Job Centre Plus key local partner for us, work very closely with ourselves and a range of other partners to try and support residents into work, very important for us. Construction sector, again, another big area for Hillingdon, 
can only step outside the building to see how much construction is actually going on. My role, part of my team, working with James and his colleagues, is to maximise the impact uh, in terms of employment and training for local residents of all these big developments we can go on around. Um, and again, the final bit, if we look at what the local picture is, what's happening locally, who's, who's working with us as, as partners, what do they think of us, what are they doing locally to support commerce, what are they doing lo locally to support residents into jobs. We make several recommendations in here in terms of witnesses and in terms of the sessions, but that's myself and James setting the picture. I think it's then over to yourself to say, well, do you agree with what we're suggesting as a format for this review? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, James, did you have anything you wanted to add on that? Just to say that um, I suspect through the review uh, a number of witnesses will mentioned the overlap with planning. Uh, as you all know, I'm head of planning. I, I do actually line manage Nigel. Um, it isn't just the past 18 months that I see Nigel on a weekly basis. I've been seeing him on a weekly basis the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's because of the close overlap between economic development activity and planning applications. And the major applications planning committee at this council, one of the reasons it partly came about was feedback from businesses that they the big businesses that, that, that they didn't really like a planning committee that dealt with the conservatory for an hour and then they, they had to wait and then uh, for the big construction and logistics or more business orientated applications. Um, in, in terms of a uh, particular part of my, my role with Nigel is, is often we're the, the first contact of businesses looking to relocate and they often want to see a senior planning person because they, they basically want a straight answer of is anything going to help us get planning or not and um, as long, long as they're not looking to locate in the green belt or anything that's sort of sacrosanct and um, we're normally keen to say um, we're open for business in effect so I work closely with Nigel and um, although I may defer to Nigel on the specifics that relate to his particular role I'm happy to comment on any planning matters or wider local plan or other um, matters that should come up during the POC review. Thank you, Chairman. So I think that really sets out what we're looking to review um, throughout the report. I think as a committee, I think tonight there's probably three parts I'd like us to really consider and get some agreement on to take this forward. Um, the way this has been set out, it's broken down into three parts, which we've got what we've called the, the big picture, skills in the future which are, and jobs and the local picture. So I think that, that lends itself quite nicely to the format that's being suggested and we can tie different witnesses in to each of those, um, which leads us on to on page 14, there's officers have provided a fairly long short list of potential witnesses for us to consider, a number of which would be pretty suitable for us to arrange to get them in to come along to the committee to give uh, evidence and answer questions that support information we receive from officer and then in accordance with that on 12 and 13 we've got the terms of reference that hopefully members have had a chance to to look at which sort of really sets out what we're looking to do as a committee what we're looking to review what we're going to understand what improve and see if we can identify any improvements so I think they're the parts I'd like people to sort of think about and discuss if anyone has any immediate comments on them Councillor Dillon. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, a witness uh, in our witness sessions um, someone like the, is it the Hayes Partnerships, uh, business partnership, uh, so that we can look at uh, SMEs and uh, how they are coping, what we are doing to encourage uh, small businesses, because obviously the large the, the large firms are coming in, but uh, as my colleague here, Scott, mentioned earlier in a, a meeting previously, uh, we, small businesses also employ a lot of people, and uh, within our town centres are quite important. And, uh, okay, so we're in where we've there. got witness session three, we're calling the local picture. Do you think they is that the Hayes Town Partnership? Yeah. So we could approach them to be a potential witness in that, along with like a Chamber of Commerce or something like. That. Okay, yeah. Councillor Graham. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, it, it concerns me that. that um, uh, 
um, from what I see in a lot of places, um, businesses are closing. And I, I imagine to some extent that might be because of the uh, amount of business rates that they're being asked to pay as much as anything else. Uh, in addition to that, um, uh, I'm aware also that there are quite a few, from what I gather, large uh, office developments where they are standing for a large part empty. And I wonder what incentives there may be to uh, uh, um, persuade people to go into those. Uh, and um, a marginal business rate as opposed to a, a heavier one might, might add to that uh, incentive. Thank you. Okay. On that, if I, Nigel, is that something you think we would be able to pick up under the first one around the, sort of the bigger picture, as in the wider economy, how business rates are charged and what sort of the inflows of businesses are, the closure rates, those sort of things? Would that be statistics that we'd have under that part, do you think? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, we, we can definitely look at the, the latest statistics. Business startups and, and closures are, are tricky because some of the information that you're looking at tends to be for very small businesses, whereas I think what Councillor Graham is talking about, about some of the, the, the larger um, office blocks that we've got in the borough, which sometimes aren't as full as they could be. Now, one of the opportunities that we might have in this review, if you wanted a wider picture, would be our colleagues either at Stockley Park, or we've got, again, we've got Charter Building, the Belmont Building, We've got good rela working relationships with the, the, the uh, owners and operators of those buildings. So they might be able to give us a different picture in terms of how our economy is from an, an office um, sector perspective. Okay, thank you. So then if, if we talk around, I'm assuming that given no one really had too much pushback that the, the format satisfied most people in terms of those three sections, under the big picture, then, if we were look to speak to one of those office block owners to find out how, how they go and what their view is on it, and then another witness that we could look to use in that session would be the Central Research Laboratory that Nigel mentioned. So I think if we could have a um, look, we can look at the possibility of getting those in as well. And then for the second session, the skills in the future, uh, my recommendation would be we look to get the likes of Uxbridge College or Job Centre Plus involved in that to understand the work that they're doing locally to train and again try to get people into employment. Um, anyone have anything further on those? Councillor Dillon. Um, one area of concern has always been the lack of manufacturing base in the or dwindling manufacturing base in the UK and um, possibly where Hayes used to be quite um, a large manufacturer of items, um, how that's changed and the uh, whether we have or can see any uh, manufacturing cropping up anywhere else. I mean, Hayes is now sort of developing into a software, hardware, and it, technology sort of based centre, uh, but we have places like West Strait and et cetera, where there's still a lot of uh, brownfield sites, and we'll, are we able to attract any kind of manufacturing there? Also, it may be interesting to uh, also see um, two large, in the bigger picture, uh, two large companies, maybe a UK based company and a overseas company and their picture of, uh, dare I say it, Brexit and how that possibly is affecting uh, their thinking uh, going forward and how it could affect Hillingdon. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think we can certainly build those in. So I think what's good here is we've got a wide range of views in terms of um, evidence and inquiry of witnesses that we, we will look to get in. Obviously one thing we need to take through democratic services is their, their availability around the, the data we have. But I think if we're going to two or three on each occasion, that we should be able to get at least one to those. Um, I think if members would be interested, I think what we could probably be able to do is arrange a site visit to some of the, the local um, recent developments that have taken place to understand the work that has gone on there. Whether that is in addition or in place of one of our meeting dates, we can look to arrange offline at some point. Um, otherwise, unless anyone has any further comments, yeah, Councillor Graham? Yes, Chairman. Um, the, the Council is a good example of where apprenticeships have uh, been granted and uh, showing a great success in, in the, uh, the number and uh, achievements of the people taking part in, in, in the various schemes. And I, I wonder if that could be extended across uh, various areas of the borough to uh, 
give opportunities for employment via apprenticeships? Uh, that would be my question. Yeah, I think that's valid. I, mean, I think across when we do these sessions in detail, um, I would expect within sessions two and three, so skills in the future, which is probably where apprentices come in, and then following that, the third session where we talk around the local picture, how we actually then utilise in those skilled and trained people that we've we've invested in, how we then progressing them through to employment in the local area. Councillor Farley. Thank you, Chairman. Um, on the um, statistics on the startups, is there anything that gives any information about the, sort of the turnover of those in terms of what portion of them closed and what areas they're in? Um, so these startups across the borough, where the, where the startups were and the size of the businesses, so how they fit in with you know, the, the employee size or small medium businesses. Thank you. Uh, Nigel, is that something you can take in terms of how, we, how they are categorised and the, the figures yes, around them? Yes, we, we can come back with a lot more information on startups and business failures. The majority of them tend to be small, so unless you're getting companies relocating into the, into the borough, they will be very, very micro businesses to start with. Um, but yes, we can definitely provide that information which gives us spread the types of businesses and the, you know, the, the and then also the, the, the failure rates as well. So you can do some comparisons. Yeah, we can we can provide you some statistics and commentary on that. Okay, so then I think if everyone's happy with that we can agree that that's, this will be our, our review we'll undertake and people are happy with the format and uh, witnesses suggested and we will look to get as many of those in as we can to our meetings. Is that agreed? Okay. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, you can stay if you wish to, or you are free to leave. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, carry on with agenda item six, so, which is the forward plan. Just to mention to members who have been on the committee previously and probably in the previous municipal year to that, this coming Thursday at the June Cabinet our committee's review into um, lesbian, gay, homophobic, transphobic bullying is coming before Cabinet with the recommendations that we, uh, we came up with, all suggested for approval. So if you are able to watch that or at least follow, follow that and then read the papers, that would be good because that was something that came from this committee. Um, further to add, the previous committee has maybe stated the obvious from the introductions. Our previous review into the broadcasting was approved and is obviously now being enacted across the committees with the potential view to be extended to petition hearings as well. Um, so the, yes, the, the forward plan here, Councillor Dillon. Yeah. Just for the record, um, it's a great report, that um, uh, the homophobic report. Um, I think it's congratulations to everybody who input on it and um, I think the Cabinet accepts it and um, every little point on that is accepted by the Cabinet. Good, thank you. So then, taking the forward plan, the Cabinet meeting on Thursday is obviously highlighted in here, along with decisions expected, and we see um, July Cabinet, a few items there, and then jumping ahead to December. Councillor Dillon? Yeah, and we quite often don't are able, well, there's not a lot of time between uh, our committee meetings and our Cabinet, so just for one, if Luke, you can come back to me on something, um, if possible. I'd just like to ask a question about our uh, spend on social services. We seem to be spending a lot of money on uh, temporary staff. Um, just reasons as to why, uh, how much we are spending, uh, and what is being done to alleviate that. Okay. Otherwise, than that, we, we note the happy to note the forward plan. Thank you. And then agenda item seven is our work program for the coming 12 months ahead. Um, as mentioned, so tonight we have the, obviously we went through the scoping report and the next few sessions, so the next four or five are going to be focused around that with witness sessions uh, built in. As I mentioned, if we looked, if we are able to carry out a site visit in relation to this, we may look to do that on one of the, the meeting nights uh, rather than create another day which may not be suitable for everybody and effectively just move everything along a month or two depending on how that goes. Um, at the end of last municipal year when we were looking at what topics to consider 
in addition to this one that we're doing as a major review, there were two that, other ones that were suggested as sort of smaller reviews, and it's been agreed that we will get off to reports as a single meeting review on community cohesion, which is a fairly coming back on a full review that this committee in its previous name did around three or four years ago, I believe. So that would be good to get that one to see what progress has been made and how the recommendations that were incorporated from that have been um, affected and how they've been used going forward. And a further one in November on enforcement actions, which I know number, some of the committee were keen on. Um, clearly, enforcement crosses a number of parts within the borough. Um, so I think where our committee is focused is primarily around enforcement around fraud um, and the abuse of the likes of brown badges and stuff like that, whereas enforcement around littering and fly tipping is something that comes under resident services more, and I believe there's a, f a full review being undertaken by that committee that Councillor Bridges is chairing. Um, is everybody happy to note that work programme for the year? Thank you. Um, that does close our meeting, we, and the next meeting is on the 23rd of July. <coughs> Thanks very much.